Hi, I'm Dr. Malpani and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, relation or rather the absence of correlation between sperm defects and birth defects. Now one of the biggest nightmares about any couple, even if you're having a baby in the bedroom, is to have a baby with a birth defect, which could of course translate into the form of a miscarriage or an abnormal ultrasound scan report, so you need to terminate the pregnancy or a baby was born and has a defect. Now, we understand that any baby has a risk of having a birth defect, but a worry which a lot of patients are doing IVF has is that IVF increases the risk of birth defects. For one thing, they think, oh, you're fiddling around with eggs and sperms in the laboratory, you're doing something artificial, you're manipulating stuff, so of course the risk of birth defects is going to increase. Not true, but they think that. One of the other reasons this emphasizes the problem is what is called a certain bias. Because if you get pregnant in your bedroom and then have a baby with a birth defect, you kind of say, okay, that was love, chance, whatever else. But when you get pregnant after IVF and then have a baby with a birth defect, you're obviously going to blame the IVF for it and not just you. Even the doctor will, your neighbors will, your friends will. And that's how some of these old wives' tales spread. And that's why you have so many of these misconceptions. And number three is that we know that a lot of what we do in the IVF lab is stuff because they weren't getting pregnant in the bedroom. For example, the man could have a low sperm count, which is why he couldn't get his wife pregnant in the bedroom. Now, when we do IVF, we're helping him to get pregnant with those low sperms, and perhaps there was a defect in those sperms which caused the birth defect. And that seems quite logical, makes sense. After all, we know that birth defects are because of genetic reasons, and we know that the genes are in the gametes, the eggs and the sperms, and therefore, if there is a genetic defect in the sperm, it will result in a genetic defect in the embryo, which will result in a birth defect. Completely logical, but not true. But of course, people will often confuse truth and logical reasoning, and they forget that A doesn't always follow B, but I'll come back to that again. So, anytime a baby is born with a birth defect, which could be in the form of a miscarriage or an abnormality on the ultrasound after IVF, the patient wants an answer. And of course, the doctor is obliged to give an answer, which means they will then end up doing a lot of genetic tests, perhaps on the products of conception or the baby, but much more on the eggs and the sperms, and predominantly on the sperms. Now, when you test sperms, you test them for two things, especially when you're looking for genetic defects. One is called sperm DNA fragmentation, and the second is called sperm morphology, or the shape of the sperms. Now, lots of fertile men will have lots of abnormally shaped sperms, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the fertility, the babies are completely normal. In fact, the number of abnormal forms can be as high as 96% even in completely fertile men. This is using a special criterion called strict morphology. But the point is that people don't understand this, which means if you do a sperm test after having a baby with a birth defect and the report shows 90% sperm defects so or 90% abnormal forms, what is the patient going to conclude? Yes, my sperms are defective and that's why my baby had a defect. Now, what's the doctor going to conclude? Yes, see, now we found the reason. It's because your sperms were abnormal or defective, so it's quite likely that an abnormal defective sperm fertilized the egg and caused an abnormal defective baby. None of which is true and I'll come back to why it's not true. So that's one of the things and the second is DNA fragmentation. So it's like a test which really doesn't mean anything because there is no correlation between sperm fertility and the amount of DNA fragmentation. A certain amount of DNA fragmentation is completely normal, but much more importantly, there's a lot of overlap between sperm DNA fragmentation rates in fertile men and infertile men. But the fertile men have enough sense not to get their sperm DNA fragmentation test done because it's an expensive test, which means it's only the infertile men. And anyone who has an abnormal result say, we found the problem. This was the reason it was your abnormal sperm DNA because it was highly fragmented which caused the baby to have a problem. A poor patient, what does he understand about DNA or DNA fragmentation? The truth is the doctor doesn't understand anything either but they cover up their ignorance by using jargon and fancy stuff which they don't understand but they can easily bulldoze the patient into pretending that they understand and doctors are very good at doing that sadly. That's why a lot of patients are now being bulldozed into believing that it was their abnormal sperm which caused the birth defect, none of which is true. How do I know that's not true? Because enough research has been done. And when I say research, this is not anecdotal experience based on my clinical experience. This is 
controlled clinical trials which show there is no correlation. And the fact of the matter is reproduction is so random, we cannot predict which sperm will fertilize which egg. Remember that. So that even if you have 96% of normal forms, it's quite likely that normal form will go ahead and fertilize the egg. So there's no reason for worry. Plus, I think the other important thing we forget is nature itself has lots of defenses built in, which will prevent an abnormality from continuing, which means even if, for example, that embryo is abnormal genetically for whatever reason, got nothing to do with the eggs or the sperms, but we know that abnormalities are fairly common. Nature will stop that embryo from growing beyond a particular point, which is why embryo arrests are so common, even in young fertile women in the IVF lab. Don't forget that. So bottom line is don't panic. Understand that there's no simple correlation between sperm defects or sperm abnormal morphology or sperm defective shapes and forms and birth defects. That's the most important thing. If you have more questions, please read more about this problem rather than getting fooled by your doctor. We have tons of information for you on sperm morphology, sperm testing, birth defects, DNA fragmentation, what tests are important, what are not important. They're all available free online on our website at www.drmalpani.com. And all this information was written by me. There's over a thousand pages and I can assure you that information is updated, accurate, reliable. I've written it and it's being specially designed so that patients understand. So we want to stop doctors from taking patients for a ride. And I do hope we can succeed in doing that. And if you have more questions, we offer a free second opinion. Just email me from our website. I'll be happy to answer. Because I'm, as an IVF specialist, nothing will give me more joy and happiness than helping infertile couples like you to have a baby. Look forward to seeing you. Look forward to helping you to have a baby.